Welcome to this ACM fact presentation of It's Just Not That Simple, an empirical study of the accuracy explainability trade-off in machine learning for public policy. And this research work is done by myself, Andrew Bell, uh, Ian Rene Solano Kameko, Dr. Oded Nav, and Dr. Julia Stojanovic, and we're all at New York University. And so we'll just dive right into speaking about the background and motivation for this work. Uh, it should come, I think, as no surprise to, to the viewers and the, the audience of this, uh, of this presentation that there has been a rapid proliferation of AI and ML into the public and private sectors over the past um, decades. And uh, with this has really come the use of uh, increasingly complex and opaque models, uh, which are often called black box models, which have been shown to lead to misuse, misuse or accidental risks. And on the right side of the screen are, are several uh, news headlines that are talking about racial and gender bias that can occur in algorithms. And this is in part due to a lack of transparency um, surrounding these models. So as a result, this field of XAI has emerged uh, where researchers are trying to study this transparency or, or how it's referred to as the explainability of models. Um, explainability is actually not well defined. We'll offer some terminology on the, on the next slide. Um, but in general, all the definitions that exist are related to understanding this idea of, of how well a human can understand some kind of AI or ML model. And there's also been some really important developments in, in the field of XAI um, for tools that are, you know, quote unquote, opening up black box models like Lime, QII, SHAP, and SAGE. And so uh, some of the terminology that, that we'll define um, is this idea that explainability is the extent to which a human can accurately predict and understand the output of an AI. And we'll actually instantiate this definition a little bit later in our work. Um, and then for interpretability, we'll use this to describe um, a, a specific set of classes that are, are in how, uh, that are inherently human interpretable. And these are things like decision trees, linear models, and rules lists. And um, these models also all importantly have like some kind of intrinsic explainability mechanism. So something like the tree diagram or the linear formula. And the last important term that we'll have is the uh, human in the loop, um, which a, a human op is a human operator of an ML system who is often informed by a prediction, but ultimately makes the, the final determination. And uh, there's also this idea that's recently emerged in XAI of the accuracy explainability trade-off. And the idea is that um, as a model complexity increases, uh, explainability decreases, uh, but accuracy might increase. So here on the left side of the screen um, is a graph that comes from an important uh, review paper in XAI. And you can see that we have model accuracy on the y-axis and explainability on the x-axis. And then holding kind of the top left quadrant are these model methods like deep learning and ensemble methods that seem to be uh, uh, very accurate but low explainability. And then in the kind of bottom right quadrant, you have things like decision trees, uh, regression models, and rules-based learning that have high explainability but supposedly uh, low accuracy. And there's also been a bit of a divide that's emerged uh, as to the extent to which this trade-off actually exists. Um, so there are those in the community that believe in the affirmative that this is an accurate depiction and that there does seem to be some kind of trade-off where, you know, there's some case studies that show complex models like neural networks and random forests outperform simpler models. Um, then there's also the, the supposing school of thought, which actually in a lot of cases excuse me, there doesn't seem to be much of a trade-off. So things like, you know, model complexity doesn't actually impact the accuracy of the models, but it can increase the explainability. And so you might be familiar with this idea of, you know, quote unquote, just fit a logistic regression, uh, which seems to perform, you know, a, a lot of the time in a lot of case studies performs really well. And in the paper, we cite case studies that support both sides of this, of this argument. Um, but importantly, there's a, a research gap with respect to uh, understanding and quantifying this trade-off. Um, and so kind of that's what our work was aiming to do, was trying to understand how we can quantify explainability and how we can quantify then the trade-off between accuracy and explainability. Um, and, you know, so our research aim when we set out with this project was to kind of this idea of uh, hoping to find something like, you know, an X increase along this Y, uh, along this X axis of explainability results in some kind of Y decrease in accuracy. Uh, but it turns out it's really just not that simple. Um, and the first challenge we ran into is this idea of how is explainability measured? How do you come up with some kind of number uh, that can encapsulate the explainability of a model? And so this was really our first challenge. And, and the way that we're kind of, that I'm gonna present this paper is we're first just gonna focus on, you know, this idea of coming up with the x-axis and then we'll return to the y-axis and kind of bring it all together in the conclusion. So when it comes to explainability, um, it's really, like I said, an open question on how one measures explainability. But there have been some significant efforts that have come from the field of human-computer interaction. Um, and they generally involve having users complete tasks and answer questions. 
Um, so we adopted this three-step process of first creating a measure, uh, second selecting some data sets and, and creating kind of a model, creating ML models and a scenario around these models, and then lastly uh, running a user study where we could measure explainability. So the task that we, uh, the, the measure that we kind of design um, is made up of both objective tasks and subjective tasks. So in the objective category, we have first this idea of anticipating the system output. Um, given an input of a system, can a, can a user identify what the model would do? Um, this idea of identifying the most important feature where given an input into the system and an output of the system, can they identify what was the most important feature of the input to influence that decision? Um, and then we also uh, adapted two subjective tasks from um, work by Dr. Brian Lim, um, where we uh, measure the perceived system understanding and the perceived system confusion of the user. Um, so our second step was to kind of select some data sets and create uh, models and scenarios. So we selected two different data sets, um, the first in the education domain and the second in the housing domain. And this is also uh, real world data um, and the you can get access to this data uh, uh, from the, the paper. Um, and then we kind of created these scenarios around it um, to, to make them uh, feel more, uh, uh, have a more applied setting so we could measure their explainability by human in the loop users. So in the education domain, we can imagine that you know, this model is being used to identify which students are at risk of failing so that school administrators and teachers can try and identify um, individuals for special tutoring programs. And in the housing domain, um, we can imagine a, a scenario where you know, government officials or tax, property tax assessors are trying to understand or estimate the price of houses so that they can do fair uh, reassessment of property taxes. And um, we also address kind of the importance and fairness implications of, of both of these two, two problems in the paper. Um, and so once we already had our measure and we had these kinds of ML settings and these ML models, we were able to run our user study. Um, so we recruited 336 participants in the education and housing domains, um, and we measured the explainability of four types of models. Uh, so the first is this category of black box models in which we present users with uh, the first case, the black box model with only a feature importance reading of that model uh, and no other information really about it besides just generally how AI and ML systems work. Um, and then the second one is the same black box model, but we're adding SHAP on top of it, uh, which is commonly how this is implemented uh, in the field and in practice. And then for the interpretable models, for, for team interpretable, if you will, uh, we used a linear regression and a decision tree where we again show feature importance and then also the linear formula and tree diagram respectively. And so uh, the survey flow looks a little bit like this. So uh, first, the users are presented with just general model information, um, which can include things like what are the inputs and what are the outputs, uh, but then also this idea of the feature importance or whatever intrinsic explainability mechanism or shaft plots apply. Then uh, the user is given a profile and asked to identify what the model output would be. And then they're given a profile and output and asked to identify the most important features for this second task. And then lastly, we have them complete the eight item Likert scale questionnaire on system understanding and system confusion. And each participant actually does this twice, uh, once for a black box model and once for an interpretable model. Uh, and we randomize the order um, to mitigate any potential learning effect that might be occurring. And so um, the paper goes into this in more detail and actually has some, some printouts for you to see. Uh, but this is just a quick preview of what these surveys look like. Um, again, some general model information, the, the color-coded feature importance indicating you know, which ones have the highest weight. Uh, and then in this case, we're showing the, the tree diagram. Um, and then again, these are some examples of the ASO and the IMIF task where a new profile is given and they're asked to anticipate what the model would have said. Um, and then for the uh, IMIF task, here's the input of the profile and what it did. And then can you identify what was the most important feature here? And so the, uh, now that we've kind of had this way of measuring, we're ready to move on to talk a little bit about the results. So we actually found some pretty counterintuitive results here. Um, our key finding and one of our major findings of this paper is that we actually found no statistically significant difference on these objective tasks between the black box and interpretable models. Um, so first, if you look to the graph to the left, this is measuring this first task one, anticipating the system output, um, and you have percentage correct along the x-axis. And you can see that in both the education and housing domains, um, the black box and interpretable models are performing really closely, and even the confidence intervals are, are overlapping. And this was also the case, uh, although slightly less pronounced, for the identifying the most important feature task. Um, so it seems at a high level, uh, there actually is, seems to be no difference in interpretability, um, which is, a, again, a pretty counterintuitive finding. Um, so then once you move on to these four-way model comparisons, 
you actually do start to find some statistically significant results. Um, but again, some things that you might not expect. So uh, I'll first call your uh, attention to the graph on the right. Um, and if you look at the blue points in both the education and housing domain, that's for the decision tree, you can see that it's performing the worst on this identifying the most important feature task. And this was due to uh, one of our, our another one of our findings of this paper, which is this idea of weaknesses and in intrinsic explainability mechanisms. So it turns out with the decision tree, when users were asked to identify the most important feature, they were just randomly picking uh, either you know the top node or one of the terminal nodes or something like that, uh, which indicates that you know maybe when it comes to decision trees, there are aspects that it can be good at helping people understand, and also aspects where it is difficult for people to understand. Um, which again is, is kind of not something really that's captured currently in literature. Um, and then we also found this idea of user confusion, uh, where we kind of noticed that there was a bifurcation on this, uh, on this perceived system confusing score. Uh, you know, a lot of people concentrated around either being confused or not confused, and it does seem to impact the performance on these two tasks. Um, so this might be uh, due to something like information overload, but more study is required uh, in this direction. And so once we have this x-axis of explainability and we kind of have some measures, uh, we're going to quickly go back to this y-axis and then we'll put it all together. Um, so when it came to measuring the accuracy of models, we trained classifiers that were a mixture of black box and interpretable models um, and are indicative of those used in ML for public policy. So we actually recorded seven different metrics, uh, which are all on the paper. Uh, but here we present two, which is accuracy and precision at 25%. Uh, precision at 25% is an important metric that's used in a lot of machine learning for public policy contexts. And so here are our results after a really extensive uh, model training process, which again, you know, all the implementation details are, are highlighted in the paper, along with actually a link to a GitHub repository, um, so you can actually follow along with what we did exactly. Um, and so I know there's a lot to digest here, so we have this version of a, a kind of a synthesized version of this table. Um, which if you look, let's say, like on the first row for education, um, we can see that when it came to the best performing interpretable model and the best performing black box model, we actually had a tie within 0.01 performance uh, on both accuracy and precision at 25%, uh, which is, is quite surprising and again counterintuitive, this idea that you would expect uh, um, some kind of difference between black box and interpretable models. Um, in the housing domain, there's a slightly different story where you have a tie among accuracy, uh, but then when it comes to things like precision at 25%, uh, the black box model actually had you know, a 0.07 or 7% uh, better performance, which is, which is pretty significant. Um, so the moral of this, of this is kind of, again, uh, sometimes we do notice this pattern, sometimes we don't, uh, but it's not quite clear exactly what's going on. So it makes for a, a bit of an anticlimactic final putting it all together, uh, but an important takeaway here, which is the idea that, you know, it doesn't seem to be possible to easily tra generalize this trade-off uh, between the two. And so I'll just quickly call your uh, attention to the graph on the right where explainability is being measured as this you know, task two, identifying the most important feature, and the y-axis is the best accuracy score. And in this case, if you look at the top, top right of this graph, you can see that the best models in both domains are the, uh, are, one is an interpretable model and one is a black box model, and they're right on top of each other. So it seems to be, in this case, there was no trade-off between a black box and interpretable model. And then there's a slightly different story on the left, uh, where actually you have the black box models being, you know, both more explainable, perhaps due to, uh, you know, this idea of, of avoiding system uh, information overload, uh, and they also happen to be the most accurate. Um, so how to make sense of this? So we kind of end the paper with some important recommendations for practitioners. Um, the first one is that, you know, and, and this is something that we learned through this research process, was that we discourage practitioners from trying to generalize about the accuracy explainability trade-off. It's really just not that simple. Um, and we think our results challenge some commonly held beliefs about the inherent pros and cons of black box uh, and interpretable models. And to this direction, we pr present several design considerations. Like, for example, uh, if you want your users to be able to identify the most important feature of a model, if that's important in your way of expl implementing explainability, a decision tree might not be the best choice. And then lastly, we, we conclude by advocating um, for interdisciplinary collaboration between you know, the many different domain experts from, from ML engineers to product designers to users um, to really being able to effectively implement explainability in ML systems. Um, and that's all, and we really thank you a lot and, and look forward to any questions.